So let's go ahead and unbox the ROG Phone 3. I'm, I swear it's gonna be real quick because I know you probably watched multiple unboxing videos. So here we go. We've got the phone, the case, the 30 watt power adapter and a Type-C to Type-C cable. See, that was quick. Now, first things first, I'm not just gonna spit the specs. Uh, I know this phone is all about the specs. It's probably the best specced phone in any price segment. But still, I'm gonna stick to my impressions, my experience with the phone so far. So I've been using this phone for uh, less than a day actually, probably 15, 16 hours. And uh, there are certain things that I noticed uh, on this phone. So uh, I used the ROG Phone 2 for about a month actually. And uh, I loved it. That was my favorite 2019 phone, like I said earlier. Now, usually there's not a lot of things a brand can do to a phone that was already pretty good. You know, the ROG Phone 2 was best in class, you know, in terms of specs, in terms of uh, the experience. So what did they actually do with the ROG Phone 3 that you can actually feel? Yeah, I know, uh, 120 hertz to 144 hertz. Uh, you get one millisecond response time. You get a Snapdragon 865 plus chip in the place of 855 plus. So there are multiple upgrades, but do you really feel the difference here? So if yes, what are those features? Let's talk about that. That's what I'm gonna focus on in this video. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the display. It's pretty good. It was pretty good on the ROG Phone 2. It has excellent color accuracy. 144 hertz and one millisecond response time. It's not a big deal, guys. I mean, it's amazing, but do you really feel the difference when you uh, switch from 120 hertz to 144 hertz? Probably not. But ASUS also made changes to other aspects of the display, namely the touch latency and slide latency. Touch latency is about 25 milliseconds and the slide latency is about 18 milliseconds. And that, guys, is fantastic. I mean, you know, it feels like it, it's registering my touch even before I'm touching it. That's how crazy good it is actually. And you know, 25 milliseconds, I I think this is probably the fastest on a phone. Let me know if any other phone has a touch latency of less than 25 milliseconds. You know, that's a huge thing. That is something you can actually feel, be it while typing or swiping through social media feeds or gaming, moving across in a, in a PUBG game, whatever it is, it's like super fast. It registers your touch almost instantly. And guys, trust me, I have never been able to type faster on any other phone. I mean. Typing on this is an absolute bliss. So uh, let's move on to the next thing that you know you can actually feel, you can actually notice. Upgraded air triggers. You know air triggers are actually the reason why I started gaming a lot. I actually tried air triggers on the ROG Phone 1 as well, but they were actually really slow. You know, once you press it and the phone's gonna take the input uh, a few milliseconds later. It was slow, it was not really practical and hardcore PUBG gamers never found it really helpful. But the ROG Phone 2, it was much better. And on the ROG Phone 3, it's almost instant. It's almost as fast as the display itself. But the best part is, you know, until ROG Phone 2, there were only two uh, different actions. You know, you can just press or maybe even swipe, but yeah, only one action per trigger. But on the ROG Phone 3, there is something called dual partition. That's a new feature. You can divide the triggers into two different partitions. So you have one, two, three, four, four actions you can map to anything you want. And you know, uh, as you can see here, I'm using the left trigger for both aim and reload. Initially, I was a bit skeptical. I don't deny it. Of course, it takes a bit of time to get used to, but it's been implemented really well, trust me. The next thing you're gonna notice is how cool the phone is even while gaming at the maximum graphics. So I, I've been playing Call of Duty at max graphics and at very high frame rate. And uh, yesterday I was playing about an hour continuously and even after one hour, it didn't even feel warm to be honest. I don't have a temperature gun at um, this studio, temporary studio, but my guess is it didn't even cross 37 or 38 degrees. Uh, that's a risky guess, but you know, definitely not above 40. And of course, needless to say, the game ran extremely smooth thanks to Snapdragon 865 plus chip. Stereo speakers, they are not actually all that better than they were on the ROG Phone 2. But did the ROG Phone 2 really need any improvement at all? I don't think so. They were fantastic by themselves and you can actually feel the bass, you know. No, that's the craziest thing uh, about this phone. You can feel the bass. Wait, let me... Oh, 
of course uh, what you hear it depends on what you are using your the, your phone or your computer speakers whatever uh, let's move on to the next thing cameras gaming phones don't have good cameras you know that's uh, that's not necessarily a myth uh, it is actually true to an extent actually even on the ROG phone 2 the cameras were actually pretty decent uh, i did compare the ROG phone 2 and the OnePlus 70 it was a full comparison i compared the cameras as well and in certain areas the ROG 2 performed better than the OnePlus 70 that's a huge thing and here on the ROG phone 3 uh, we've got the IMX 686 sensor 48 megapixels f1.8 no optical image stabilization though that's a bit of a bummer the ultra wide camera has not been updated it's the same as what you find on the ROG phone 2 but Asus has introduced a new 5 megapixel macro camera of options including the amazing motion tracking that Asus offered uh, on the Asus 6Z and the ROG phone 2 and there are a lot of video modes Uh, guys the, this can also shoot 4k at 120 frames per second which means you get 4k slow motion now that's not something you can find on many phones you have pro mode you have night mode and both of them work with both main and ultra wide cameras again that's rare and there is also a pro video mode which again works with both main and ultra wide cameras uh, the regular video mode also does uh, obviously And apart from that the phone also supports full HD 240 fps slow motion full HD 120 fps slow motion and 720p 480 fps slow motion so forget the gaming phone camera myth this one has a lot of features packed in the the app is actually pretty packed the next thing i want to talk about is the battery life of course it's the same as what you got on the ROG phone 2 6000 mAh but the charging time is a lot faster here like we saw earlier during the unboxing this one comes with a 30 watt fast charger so uh, you know even a 30 watt charger uh, i thought it will take at least 2 to 2 and a half hours to charge a 6000 mAh battery but i was quite surprised to see it get charged in less than 1.5 hours actually so that's really fast If you're not really into fast charging, if you if you would rather you know preserve the battery health, if you're worried about the battery health, you can go to settings and you know you can schedule your charge time. If you have a regular routine sleep schedule, you know say you go to bed at 11 and wake up at 7, you can just enter those values on the phone and when you put it on charge at 11 p.m., it will take those 8 hours to get charged fully. So it's not just fast charging guys, even slow charging is a pretty good feature to preserve the battery health mainly in case you're you're going to you're planning to use the phone for like 3 or 4 years. So in the past 16 18 hours I really did not come across anything negative except the lack of headphone jack. Why? It's a gaming phone. I have a bunch of really good earphones with 3.5 mm pin that I was really excited to try with the ROG Phone 3 but Anyway, those are my initial impressions. Guys, before I leave, just let me know if this is something you would like to see in the future as well. Instead of doing a traditional unboxing and reading out the specs, I could instead use the phone for a few hours, you know, up to 24 hours and share my experience with you, like, you know, whatever I noticed on the phone, whatever differences, whether they are noticeable or not, uh, you know, basically the specs that actually matter in real life usage. So, Let me know if that's something you would like to see and uh, if you did like to see this just hit the like button and even subscribe to technology dot thank you bye